All right, everybody. So I'm in between one-on-one -on -one sessions with clients, um, phone clients. When I do sessions, I usually have the light really dark. I just ate eggs. So who cares? Um, listen, I want to do this video because it's something that's been on my mind. Um, it's about what happens when you die. And I'm going to give you just a brief overview in 10 minutes. This is coming from 18 years of channeling professionally. I have literally crossed over millions of souls to the light. And I know that may seem unbelievable to some of you, but it happened. So I work, you know, through my channeling, I meet a lot of souls, a lot of spirit energy, which there's a difference. And when I'm doing my healing sessions with people, energetic clearings, bringing in healing, connecting to people from higher self, giving them information, um, a lot of times that departed loved ones come in, okay? Um, and if only if it's like part of their healing, okay? If it's like, you know, if it's important to that particular healing that they're experiencing, uh, loved ones will come in. So... And clearing haunted houses when I first started. You know, these are people, right? So I've learned a lot from these souls. I've learned a lot from the departed. I've learned a lot from the people that have passed on to the other side. And I've been told a lot of things and seen a lot of things. Um, what goes on the other side. So what happens when you die is completely up to you. In more ways than one. Okay, so... It depends on your overall vibration and where you are at. Because you can believe in God 100%. You can be very spiritual. But when you die, you stay in the lower astral plane. So there's different levels and different dimensions of, well, planes, if you will, of energy. So the first place is the fourth dimension, the lower astral plane. And that's where a lot of people are aware of. That's kind of like when the, you know, the boogeyman is, right? And shadows and dead people that, you know, knock on the walls and all that stuff. This is where there's a lot of lost souls, a lot of trapped souls. What does that feel like, Paul? What does that look like? What does that translate like? Well, do you ever have a dream and all of a sudden you kind of feel like it's not a dream anymore and you're just kind of in this weird place where you don't really feel safe it's and it's just like a you're in this very if a very it's a very public area right almost like being in an airport waiting at your gate or a subway system there's no boundaries there's no privacy right uh anything can happen to you you can have like the sleep paralysis there you can just go out of your body and and, and just experience some really weird stuff. So it's kind of like dreamland. So you don't have a physical body when you die, but there's different versions of physical, all right? So when you dream, you don't realize that it's a dream. Or even if you do realize it's a dream, you still think you have a physical body, right? Yes. You still feel like you're driving a car. You still feel like you're walking in a house. You still feel like you have clothes on or whatever it is. You see? But you really don't. But you do in a way. You do in that dimension. So you go to the next stage of the least physical, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? Now, what happens from there is you move up in vibration. Okay? So... If you're in that lower astral energy, this is where people, not all people, this is where some people commit suicide. This is where they go. This is where people that are just really dark, dark people, right? People that are just possessed, uh, evil people with no souls, right? This is where a lot of riffraff hangs out. But then there's also that upper, lower astral plane, right? To where you can kind of, live in this slash lower astral plane slash dream world to where you can create your own life there. You can kind of build your own house, right? You can, it's not going to be like on earth though. It's going to be very not private. Okay. Um, but you can still kind of like exist in a, almost like a carbon copy 
imprint of what life is. Now, this is where a lot, again, a lot of riffraff comes and hangs out and interferes with these souls. Okay, there's a lot that goes on here. I have seen people that have been murdered, you would imagine, have to go to this place, right? No, I've seen people that have been murdered that I know really personally and close to that have gone directly and crossed over to pure light. I've also seen that person bring their murderer to me for healing. So that is some high ass vibration stuff right there okay and then i've seen people that have committed suicide and committed murder that they're with you know where you would imagine them to be okay so that just shows you it's and where you where you are in it there's people that have believed in god their whole life and everything but but died really young they lost their family they, you know they're young they had kids they had a husband or a wife right and and it's like and even though they can be very spiritual and believe in God, they're very pissed off, angry. There's resentment. There's all this other stuff to where they don't want to go to the light. There's a lot of people that were taught, especially in the older days, that, you know, if you drank alcohol, if you had premarital sex or anything like that, you're going to be judged by God. What about all religion that says, you know, you're a sinner, upon birth. Do you think those people want to go to the light or to go see God? I work with these souls during sessions, right? I've worked with these souls, especially 18 years ago, back then, to give that, to open that light a little bit. Um, and some of them that don't want to go and cross over directly, directly, if they can, you have to go to healing spaces, healing realms, healing rooms, if you will. And you have to work out your shit. Okay, because you can't bring the muddy shoes into the new house type of thing. So you go, it's kind of like steps of like therapy, really. And you acclimate slowly by letting go. You have to heal, repair, all this stuff, but it's letting go. And when you truly let go of the lower earth plane and your resentment and everything that happened, you go up into vibration. Now you lose that dream physical body the more that you go up into the light. Now this one instance, I had a World War II past life and uh, when, that, when that was being healed on me, a Nazi, German Nazi captain in spirit, of course, showed up next to me. And this had to do with my World War II past life. And all these uh, dead American soldiers and German soldiers lined up behind him. And I opened up the light, opened up a crossover with Universal Oneness. And that Nazi captain had marched into the light. And there was a single file line of soldiers that had been dead since World War II from America to Germany. So when I say I've crossed over millions of souls, okay, now you go up in vibration. The more you go up in vibration, the more you let go, the more you become pure energy again, okay? You don't lose your identity, but you blend more into oneness. You always have your identity, okay? And when... The higher you get into the light and you become oneness, you, you kind of do lose that identity, but you don't really because you realize you're part of the whole big picture anyway, right? You realize that you're all one, you see? And that is where I could start a whole new video of what happens from there, okay? And just remember this too, universal oneness has a universal oneness. Ooh. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Love to everybody. And I got a big announcement uh, coming up. I'm going to be doing this kick-ass live Zoom, um, how to connect to your higher self, where I'm going to do a guided meditation and bring you to your higher self, okay? So stick around, watch my videos, because I'm about to advertise that soon. So love to everybody.